The budgetary proposals of the Tobago House of Assembly were submitted to the Ministry of Finance, consistent with the provisions of Act 40 of 1996. Tobago has special challenges, and we continue to work with the Tobago House of Assembly to mitigate the decline in economic activity in Tobago and to restore its economy to a trajectory for continued growth and resilience. Resilience. Madam Speaker, the tourism development Tobago economy has been particularly hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. Over the last several months, this administration has been working in concert with the Tobago House of Assembly on a series of broad-based measures to bring relief to the people and the business community of Tobago, including the Tourism Accommodation Relief Grant, Business Relief Grant, Business Relief Loan, Relief Grant to Tourism Industry Ancillary Services, a four-year soft loan facility with a two-year moratorium through First Citizens and Republic Bank for micro, small, and medium businesses, and a liquidity support loan program for the credit union movement. In the next fiscal year, building on many initiatives which are already in place, we will continue to work assiduously with the Tobago House of Assembly to institute an enhanced suite of economic and social measures to reduce the impact of the pandemic as we provide additional relief for all Tobagonians and citizens resident in Tobago. The allocations to the Tobago House of Assembly place increased focus on enhancing their tourism product. The greater use of digital technologies and social media in marketing attracting new investment in the tourism sector, enhancing service delivery, and on financial support to facilitate upgrades to properties in the tourism sector and to boost their online presence. The construction of the new ANR Robinson International Airport Terminal is scheduled to commence in January 2021. Additionally, the Inter-Island Sea Bridge will benefit all right, that's the Minister of Finance, their column, Imber, talking about the plans for Tobago. But to speak with us uh, this morning about what's going to be happening with Tobago uh, for fiscal 2021 is Dan Haddad, uh, President of the Trinidad and Tobago, Tobago Chamber of Commerce. Good morning to you. Is it President or CEO? I am the Chairman of the Tobago okay. Division of the chairman. Trinidad and Tobago Chamber, Chamber of, of Industry Commerce. and Commerce. Oh, so it's considered as a division. Okay, good. Yes. And, and, and I'm not a CEO. CEOs get paid, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the Chairman, the Chairwoman of the Division, the Tobago Division of the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Commerce. That's correct. All right, good. Uh, $2.134 billion allocated to Tobago. Is it sufficient? It's the normal in terms of the percentages. It, it's, it's basically a little less than the, they got last year, but it's more or less what Tobago gets all the time. And it's very much to carry out recurrent expenditure and 200 million for capital investments, 18 million for URP. So it doesn't say to us anything special happening other than the bond facility that they are able to raise now as the Tobago House of Assembly. How efficient and effective that will be, we don't know. Other than that, we heard a lot about tourism and fixed in properties and so, but there was nothing to back it up and we look forward to hearing it in terms of flights and people coming in because the airport even trinidad cannot come to tobago as we speak so is it that um we have some plans for the opening of that border so that the wall between us can be broken down and that we can enjoy at least some part of the movement of people which creates the consumption which is what tourism is all about right tourism is not a word tourism is an experience by persons, and that's what we wish to see, but they can't come here. We have one flight in the morning, 34 persons, one in the afternoon, 34 persons, with a long list of who is entitled to get on board the plane first. So clearly there's no room for tourism there, and the boats are operating not at full capacity, and because of the fair factor that's been promoted around COVID, 
um, and we came to a serious lockdown in July, it, or early August, it just ended what we were starting to enjoy a little bit of life and economics. Right. So with the reduced flights and uh, um, reduced flights and uh, sea ferry ferry services, how is Tobago surviving? Is there any kind of economic activity at all in Tobago at this point? Well, the only thing would be, Natalie, that check of that 2.134 billion, which would have been part of last year, the last tranche, that's what has the public service, the THA employees employed, and that will be the money circulating. There is no other money circulating on the island. There's nothing external coming out. Right. Well, that has to be a, a, a fundamental issue, especially with Tobago. We heard the Minister of Finance saying that Tobago is definitely in a very serious position and they're going to try to do what it's about. What do you make of the initiative uh, by the government to pump $50 million into uh, renovating accommodations, tourist accommodations in Tobago while the pandemic is ongoing and the, the borders are closed? Um, the timing would have been correct in terms of getting it ready. But again, the execution was very long and windy, but at least I have been seeing a couple properties getting renovated or paint going on the walls, at least to give it a brighter look. But pretty walls with no people really is not going to fix it. We are not in a position where we have heard or seen any marketing of the island. We have not heard or seen there are a lot of webinars going on from a tourism perspective other islands have encouraged people who are now working at home from international companies to come to their shores and live for a, a, a long period of time so that they can have the influx of, of people. We need to understand that economics is the movement of the human, the human element. We are such an important factor on Earth, and we seem to not understand how important our movement is. And this movement creates all of this economics. Right. So us being told to stay inside, go behind the computer, get online or whatever, just really makes us house bugs and will kill any economy anyway. So do you but believe I, that I am the happy to hear, I'm happy to hear the acceptance and admittance that Tobago is in a messy place. And I want to say has been so for the last minimum 12 years. Wow, 12 years, that's a very long time. So do you believe that the government should uh, uh, increase flights between Trinidad and Tobago and uh, ferry services so that at least the t Trinidad and Tobago can be connected and you can generate some economic activity, even in light oh, of yes. the pandemic. I think, oh, yes. I think that Trinidadians are locked in. They are, they are usually a bunch of lively people and they are blocked in to this space called Trinidad. And I think we need to remove the fear factor of this word COVID-19. We need to open up the flights. We need to put on more daily flights. We need, because what's interesting is the flight from Trinidad to Tobago and back is operating at half capacity and you have to sit in a certain arrangement. However, the Caribbean Airlines, Trinidad or Port of Spain to New York left with full capacity and everybody sitting next to each other. And then my understanding is beyond that, the flights that went to London and so with BA, they all were full capacity with everybody sitting next to each other. So I think we need to get back to reality and we need to have the flights move and we need to encourage the movement. I don't know that, um, I want to agree, I read an article with Dr. Ford Khan in the papers and he's the medical expert or at least one of them. And he's saying that we are overreacting and I want to endorse that from my perspective, that we are overreacting. The chamber members have come up with a number of ideas that can move forward in terms of us getting between Trinidad and Tobago. Otherwise, I think they um, need to put up some screens between San Fernando and Central, Central and Port of Spain, and so on, so that we all block off everybody in a space. But Tobago is always the one that gets blocked off. My question, though, and I want to ask it is, is it the THA is requesting this sort of lock off and, and, and protection bubble, as they call it. Is it really requested here? Because we seem to be between a rock and a hard place of getting anything done on this island. 
Okay, I, under, I understand what you're saying about screening of Trinidad, uh, well, Port of Spain from San, San Fernando. But you said that the uh, chamber has some ideas about how to treat with the situation. You want to uh, share some of those ideas with us? Well, we were speaking in a meeting last week, and the ideas came that you should have social distancing and sanitizing. Masks did not seem to be a major factor in countries that has been managing COVID best, such as New Zealand, Sweden, Iceland, and also Greece is doing well. Most persons actually look and behave very uncomfortable with a mask on. So we need to protect the vulnerable groups. And the truth is, if you have vulnerable people at home, you have to take measures. It has to become personal responsibilities where we take the roles of caring for our own. And people need to probably sanitize before they come home or into the house, take off your clothes outside, treat with it. We need to eat healthier to boost our immune systems. We need to ensure that our living and, and environments and so are maintained in clean conditions. So we need a high standard of cleanliness. Some of the things that we have, some of the basic things that we have let fall by the wayside because of our own sloppy behaviors. Um, business places need to use and encourage different vibrations of energy. So when we open back bars and so, we cannot afford the bar owners need to be responsible by the type of music they play. They need to control what's happening. Let people have conversations within a level that the noise levels are not where they have to scream beyond the level of the music or the type of music that they are playing. So they need to tone it down. Right. We need Cal to reopen. We need a lot of things. The port has to open up as well as what's happening. So there are many things that we can do. We can't sit here and continue to sit in a paper bag and lock the top because COVID wouldn't kill us. Something else will, a number of other measures will. But you know, Ms. Haddad, while I hear you, the reality is that sometimes it's difficult to compare Trinidad and Tobago to other places uh, that are successful because of our attitude and because of our ability to control and to take personal responsibility. I think that's where the fall down is. Because when you talk of the sanitizing and social distancing measures, they are in place. And yet right here in Trinidad and Tobago, we still see the numbers going, uh, adding on 40, 50. Uh, I think at one day we even had over 100 positive cases. So the reality is that even with these measures in place, when you look at places that thought that the virus uh, wasn't so serious, such as the United States, such as the UK, they do have spread and they have a lot of cases. Is that what we want in Trinidad and Tobago? Well, I think we have the right prime minister in place that really has a voice that speaks of discipline. And I think it can be used in a good way. And I think the people need to start to act responsibly. We have made a decision for Carnival five months ahead, which I endorse. But we also need to speak sternly to our people as to what will and will not be the repercussions of their behavior. But we can't continue to do this because every time we get out there, Natalie, COVID is still there. Nobody has told us where COVID is going. So we cannot continue like, like this. Right. So we, we have to cannot find a way. Continue. Every time we get outside, you hear again, COVID is still there. So how do we keep staying inside? We're going to die from being inside. All right. Because we won't be able to eat. We won't have money to pay our bills. Banks are going to do similar things to what we saw happen to great Errol Fabian. What are we doing? What are we doing? This cannot continue. Right. Well, I know that uh, on the by this weekend, we are supposed to hear from the Prime Minister if those places that are partially closed are going to be reopened. So let us hope that the sea bridge and the air bridge are two of those issues that are addressed at this weekend. But Ms. Haddad, I want to thank you so much for speaking with us this morning. Thank you, Natalie. You're most welcome. Dan Haddad there, uh, who is the chairwoman of the Tobago Division of the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Commerce. And she's saying that we are going to die from something else because COVID is there and we have to find a way to reopen this country so that economic activity, especially in Tobago, can be generated. We take a break and we'll be back with you.